Hi, I'm Wayne. And I'm Norma from Our Vacationer. Follow us as we travel in our motorhome in Jeep Cherokee. Subscribe and click the notification bell. If you've been watching our channel, you know that I'm Wayne. And I'm Norma. And we are the Our Vacationers. We're not full time. We're uh, about half time, I guess. We still have our sticks and bricks and we still take month or two long vacations across the United States and, and uh, Canada. So we've been challenged to do the 10 question COVID. How has this affected your life? The Gimpy Camper from Tennessee challenged us and we're gonna be challenging some people at the end of the video. So stay tuned to see if you've been challenged and we'll get started with the 10 questions. All right, question number one. How many rolls of toilet paper do you have? I'm a big time couponer, have been for many years, and I had a stockpile of toilet paper plus basically everything else before the virus came around. So I counted and we have 35 rolls, but none of those were purchased during the virus. They were all ready here before the virus. So Yeah, so to brag on my wife being a, a heavy duty extreme couponer, she will make trips to some of the local chain store, but it's located here in town and and she'll come out with a cart full and show me the receipt and say, I got all this stuff and made seven dollars. So <laughs> she I'm proud of her, thankful that she does that, but we have tons of toothpaste, razor blades, toothbrushes, deodorant, uh, paper towels, toilet paper, things that uh, the, the chain likes to attract you in with these low prices and coupons so that you'll buy other things too, but they don't know her very well. She, <laughs> she goes to get the bargain yep. and, and comes out like a little kid with a new toy every time she saves money. So I'm proud of her for that. and. Uh, I didn't have a clue. I just knew it was a lot of toilet paper. So thankful for that. What's question number two? Question number two. What has been the biggest change in your lifestyle since the shutdown? I'm the lunchroom manager at our local junior high school. So on a daily basis, I'm around almost 700 people. So to stay at home in quarantine with just the two of us has been a little stressful because I'm used to talking to people every day and seeing all the kids and so that's that's been my stress point I guess. On the contrary to her I work from home and I work part-time so home is wherever we're parked uh, as long as I have internet access so I make my uh, living uh, basically retired but still working part-time uh, doing the IT service work for a company and the biggest change, I guess, that wasn't a change for me at all. I stay at home or in the camper during my work day, and she comes home when she gets off. So it's it's always either just me or just me and her. So that's no change for me. But the biggest change for me, I guess, is just not being able to uh, pull up the anchors and go somewhere and to be able to travel or go for a weekend. Or we were hoping to go out to Colorado this summer, and due to the 401k and the uh, savings drops and you know the un uh, like Moab they're not allowing people into that area so Utah was a part of our trip we wanted to see all the uh, national uh, arches parks. and Moab and all the national parks out there without naming them all and so that's been a big change for us we've had to cancel all our plans and and so we, we're still thinking we may go out to North Carolina Outer Banks and do some tour and see what that's all about Wright just, Brothers Museum and stuff. Just a little closer to home for safety. <laughs> yeah and and you know if things turn worse again and we have to come back we won't be five days away. All right question number three where are you currently docked or parked? Well we're in our yard. <laughs> yeah you can't see no. my uh, garage next yeah. next to us we, so, we keep the motor home parked yeah. in the garage and we come out here sometimes and pretend that we're camping so <laughs> yeah it's still the same we got 50 amp service and water and we don't have sewer we've never tied into our uh, sewer system so but it, it's good to come out here and spend a weekend and just pretend like we're camping it's almost nearly the same but not quite okay question number four what have you gone without recently my biggest thing is we have three grandbabies and um, our daughter works at the hospital in our area 
and she's just being overly cautious because the kids can cause the virus without knowing it or we could cause it you know have it without knowing it so we could infect each other so we've got to see them two or three times and you know we can't get close to them can't hug them can't kiss them and they're just turned seven five and two and the five-year-old and the seven-year-old they've kind of explained it to them and they understand what's going on but the little two-year-old doesn't understand why Grammy Papa can't hug him anymore. So he, he has been trained to yeah, give air hugs, yeah, though, so he'll yeah. come out and do this to us. And yeah, we've learned the air won't hugs. Get, won't get close to us. We're just looking forward to the day where we can just eat them up and give them hugs and kisses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be my number one, too, but for the sake of diversity and not give the same answer, I guess one of the biggest things that I've gone without is the ability to travel, which mm -hmm. is about the same answer as I've had before. But... Um, you know, also going out to eat, we, we love to do that, where it's just the two of us, so sometimes it's about as cheap to go out to eat and get what we want and leave the mess with the restaurant. But nobody lets you come inside. You have to take it to go only, and that's kind of an inconvenience to have to go get it and bring it back. Although, I am thankful that those places are still in business. We've still had plenty of food. We've had plenty to eat, and uh, our heart goes out to those that are that are hurting really bad right now due to this virus. Question number five, for what are you most grateful? The thing that I'm most grateful for is none of our families or friends, no one that we know personally has gotten sick with the coronavirus. So that makes me feel a little safer. Our small town that we live in, everybody's taking it serious. They're wearing masks and gloves and uh, just drive through only on the eating places and um, I think we've done real well to contain the virus and not have it spread so much. Yeah, I guess uh, going back to the can't hug the grandkids and the reason for that, our daughter, their mother, works at a hospital. And so she comes home and has to decontaminate before she even comes in the house. And she's concerned that she may bring it home. So with that in mind, I wanted to thank people like uh, the Gimpy Camper and there's a channel called Life Beyond Scrubs and um, no ordinary adventure. Uh, they're travel nurses and, and those guys are giving it up for, for the sake of people like us. If you get deathly ill, they're taking the risk of getting the same virus. So I'm thankful for people like the Gimpy Camper, Barrett, and uh, all of the travel nurses, my daughter, all of those that are working on the front line. So uh, it is life threatening and we just appreciate that. So I'm, I'm grateful for people like that that are willing to uh, uh, risk their their healthy lifestyle for for people like us all right question number six what do you miss the most what I miss the most is being around all the kids every day and just the teachers and the staff of the junior high school that I work at um, but during this crisis we've been approved by our state to still feed the kids so three days a week they go up to the school they have groups of people that will receive the food from the truck drivers, which is another person, another category that I'm thankful for, that they're still delivering items, food items especially. Uh, so they get together and they have an organization that, that sits stations at six feet apart, and they unload the trucks, bag up the food, put the bags in boxes, and then put them back in the cooler. And then the next day, the parents of... Uh, well, any child that signs up for it, they're not going to be turned down, but it was designed mostly for uh, the kids with uh, free lunch or underprivileged children that uh, otherwise may not have any food to eat. So she's going out three days a week to, to do that, package lunches and serve lunches. Uh, not pre-cooked, but more like a grocery store. Here's a box full of food. Take it home and, and uh, enjoy. Uh, what do you miss the most? Uh, I, I miss being around people too, the fellowship at church and uh, the uh, the ability to go out with our friends to go camping, which ties into one of my other answers, but just getting out and going where we want to go, that's what I miss the most. Uh, I'm accustomed to staying in the house, that's where I work, and quite often we'll have dinner and we'll watch other people's YouTube channels uh, for our entertainment for the night, and maybe a little bit of the news, although that's way too depressing anymore so we don't watch much news 
Um, so I miss being able to get together with people, the church and, and the camping friends that we have. And there are several of us camping buddies here locally that get together on Friday mornings and have our coffee club meeting and talk about where we're going next. And so that's, that's what I miss, being around people. Okay, question number seven. When is the last time you've been in a campsite? Well, this was March the 16th through 20th. We were in Mobile camping with three other, or two other, there was three of us camping, but two other three, couples. Three couples, three RVs. And uh, this, while we were down there, we found out that the state was going into lockdown. They were starting to shut restaurants down and all that. So um, we came straight home from there and went into lockdown. Well, since we traveled together, my answer is the same. same. We, we went down to Mobile. We, we, we did a video on that, too, so I hope you'll go uh, watch that video. We had fun. We enjoyed everything uh, right towards the tail end of that week. They started shutting down things like the restrooms and showers at the campsite, and restaurants were changing to drive through only, and they had shut the beaches down while we were there. So um, we still had a great time, enjoyed spending time with friends and grilling out and that kind of thing. But that, that's when it got serious for us. When we came home, we pretty much went into lockdown, and we've been here ever since. Okay, question number eight. What's your favorite quarantine food? <laughs> All of it. Well. My favorite hobby is eating. As long as I have chocolate, I'm okay. I can do without everything else if I have to. Got to have my chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing so far uh, since we've been in quarantine, the, the uh, vegetable fruit market is open locally. Mm -hmm. And we go there and buy fresh potatoes and squash and okra and tomatoes and uh, cantaloupe, watermelon, uh, and, and that has been a special treat. When mm -hmm. I was growing up, our supper time or dinner time meal may be nothing but fried potatoes, fried squash, fried okra, corn slice bread. of tomato, and some cornbread, glass of milk. So she's been doing a lot of that, and I really enjoy that. Um, probably too much <laughs> all right question number nine how are you exercising or working out well since I've had so much time on my hand I've been doing a lot of house cleaning closets vacuuming dusting taking down curtains and blinds and washing them washing windows and then the three days I work at school we get a good workout so those have been my workout and we have been taking a few little walks up and down the street on pretty days uh, e exercising is not something that that I do uh, sadly uh, I do like to eat and, and I do like to stay busy but busy work is like working out in the yard or working on my YouTube channel or my my blog or uh, figuring out how to how to do things so that's that's what my day job is a lot is working with computers so I, I tend to continue that into the evening, but we've been going for a walk as much as we can. Um, not not to get on this or ask for feel sorry for me or anything, but but I've had a case of gout in my left foot for about three weeks that's been killing me. So for the most part, I haven't been able to put my foot on the floor till just a few mm -hmm. days ago. Um, so so we haven't really been what you call lifting weights and doing the stairmaster and the treadmill and all that kind of stuff. But we have been going for walks and staying busy, just so we don't sit still all day long, and not do anything. Okay, question number ten: What will be your quarantine pandemic panic purchase? I guess mine is with uh, so many things shutting down and then the scare about not having toilet paper. Um, non-perishable foods I've stocked up on those more than anything that I've ever done just because it just makes me not so nervous knowing that we have food in the house and I've uh, bought lots of things that uh, our grandbabies would eat just so that they would have something if the grocery stores or whatever shut down and our son has Crohn's disease so he has a very limited diet so I've been buying lots of stuff for that so really just food related items my coffee pot broke <laughs> and I couldn't have coffee and that's never a good thing so 
just kind of being funny. I ordered a new coffee pot, but that wasn't COVID related. That was just because the Keurig quit it quit working it wouldn't work at all so i had to yeah. find one really quick and get it ordered and yeah. shipped second day air so that i've got coffee i don't drink coffee but we needed a coffee maker. <laughs> yep <laughs> we're the first two we're going to challenge five people to do the covid19 challenge uh one of the first ones to challenge is life beyond scrubs this is Ilya and Nadia, and they have three children and a dog. Uh, Jupy Outdoors, that's David and Erica and their son. Uh, Red, Redhead and the Preacher, that's Linda and Bruce. They don't have uh, children that travel with them. They do have children and grandkids, but uh, they're from Texas, so we want to challenge them. Thank you. Uh, I Love RV Life, Jerry and Joan, they're out of Georgia. And uh, we've followed them for over a year now and really enjoy their adventures, campground reviews, and uh, just their positive, uplifting look at life. They're, they're fun to watch. Uh, and then the Chicks Life, James and Ashley and their girls. Uh, they're from Oregon, I think. We followed them for a long time and really enjoy their, uh, uh, they kind of remind us of us at a younger age. Mm -hmm. They homeschool their kids and we homeschooled our children up until college and they both have degrees and good careers so I'm thankful to Miss Norma for uh, teaching them and keeping them straight to, to, to raise mm -hmm. the two good children that we've got so that's our challenge group uh, we follow all these and, and many more we, we but we had to choose five so we narrowed it down to those so hopefully if you'll watch those channels uh, I'll put a uh, logo there so you can go find them uh, and, and look them up. We recommend them highly. And we hope you've learned a little bit more about us. And uh, we hope to learn more from these that we've challenged. And thank Gimpy Camper, Barrett. And uh, y'all pray for, for Barrett and, and others that are on the front line. He's in New York City dealing with the uh, front line, the front line of this COVID mm -hmm. virus. So keep him and his family in your prayers. And we'll see you, our vacationers, on the road. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.